Ted, it's Friday, and I know a lot of people are looking forward to the weekend. I'll actually probably spend a good part of the weekend uh, doing some writing for our website. Well, that that allows me to keep a what you call a seven day presence on the news cycle and 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 get the thoughts out that otherwise uh, would probably end up you know filling up my head to the point where the steam would come out of my ears. Seven minutes after eight o'clock, Bill Colley with you as Mr. Big Voice just told you fifty nine. We want to thank you to News Radio 1310 and welcome you, that is, to News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Coming up during the course of the program, uh, Donald Trump, uh, more news on him today. And, and it seems that some very important and influential columnists are warming up to his candidacy. We'll, we'll explain that a little bit later, as well as is Ted Cruz. Uh, the two have a joint appearance that they have scheduled. It's going to be a big one. Also, the EPA has had its hand slapped by a judge in a lawsuit filed by several states in the Midwest and the Northwest, that includes this one, that we live in. Well, okay, if you're listening in Nevada and Utah, you also may have have been involved in that, so I guess I can get away with saying that. We'll have some details on that because it's going to be very important in your own backyard in many cases. But I wanted to open the show today and, and just share with you some things that some very astute people listen to this program and they keep me up to date on a great many things, and they happen to send a couple of things along during the course of the last uh, 22 hours since I got off the air yesterday morning at 10 o'clock. And I just wanted to share these, and, and we should maybe keep this in mind. The Drudge Report has an update this morning. I walked into work about 5 o'clock. Before I left the house, about 4.30, I was looking at the, the Drudge Report, did not see this headline. The, the headline has since been updated. And it's a, it's, it's, it's a headline about all of the uh, the migrants who are leaving the Middle East and they are rushing into Europe and they're being dropped there by smugglers. There are photographs of a family or families coming through barbed wire into Hungary and a little girl getting her hair cut. I guess that's supposed to, her hair was caught on the, the barbed wire. That's supposed to elicit your sympathy. So you'll say, well, gee willikers, maybe we should have a few hundred thousand of these people come west. Story out of Maine. That's on the other end of the country. For those of you who went to public school, Warner Todd Houston is the author. Headline, three Muslim immigrants spend hours beating a Christian man to death in Portland, Maine. The writer says, Portland, Maine has been shocked by a monstrous crime perpetrated by three Muslim immigrants who spent hours beating a Christian man to death after being invited to his home for a party. (sighs) You know... Thank you for inviting us and your hospitality. Let's get, let's get out the lamp and beat him over the head. The three Muslims were at the home of Freddie Ekoa when at some point they decided to slowly murder him by spending hours kicking him, punching him, and hitting him with a piece of furniture until he finally died from his injuries. According to the autopsy report, he had cuts and bruises all over his body with the final blows and fatal blows coming to his head. Of the three Muslim assailants, at least two have common Somali names, Mohammed Mohammed, age 36, Osman Sheikh, 31, and the third suspect is Abil Tashomi, 23. And it says there were several people who were at the party uh, uh, when it when the fight broke out. It says, but how many of them understood what was being said is in question, since the arrest affidavit states that the words being exchanged between Akoa and his assail- assailants were not in English. But it makes you wonder what the other people at the party decided to do. Did they just say, well, I <laughs> don't want any part of this, we'll just leave. Uh, doesn't look pretty. We'll get out of the building. And then I have this. This comes out of Virginia, virginiafreecitizen.com. And the writer has a question in a headline. We need 65,000 Syrian refugees here? Really? Apparently, Virginia is now being targeted for a dump of these refugees coming here to escape the uh, the civil war in, in that part of the world. The U.S. Department of State, DHS, that's the Department of Homeland Security, who are supposed to keep us safe. And 14 Democrats in the U.S. Senate are begging for 65,000 Syrian refugees to be settled in our communities and without consent. Right now, Virginia has just 17 refugees from Syria. So the writer asks, are, are they being considered or is the state being considered for the next big wave? Membership, and this is, this is something you have to remember. Apparently this is part of the, uh, part of the process. Now, this comes from your government. Membership in a U.S. registered Islamic terrorist group is not a bar to entry on the program as long as the refugee was not a, quote, direct participant, unquote, in terrorist activity. So you could belong to a terrorist organization. That will not bar you from coming here. 
as long as you did not go up and actually, you know, drown anyone or burn anyone in a cage or chop their heads off, as long as you didn't actively participate in that. And I guess when we ask them, did you chop anybody's head off? Oh, no, I would never do such a thing. All right, you can come. The writer says what seems to be happening specifically within or with the Muslim immigrants as they are being encouraged to assimilate, not to assimilate, rather. For example, Nashville's chief academic officer, Jay Steele, commented on Arabic classes that are being offered in many of their schools. Heritage Arabic classes are meant to build off the skills students in the districts already have. We believe it will help them be more engaged in school as a whole and also help them stay connected to their native culture. In other words, you don't have to learn English any longer. Well, how, how are you going to... Well, you'll then live in separate enclaves, and you'll, your hostilities will grow there, and this is the future, folks. Bill Colley with you on Top Story, News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. You can reach the program, 736-0300. And, of course, speaking of 300, that is what we expect here in just a few weeks coming to this valley. You're up next. You're on the air. Why is that? Is there no patience any longer among this listening audience? Come now. Of course, there's none with a host either, so I understand how that works. You're up next. You're on KLIX. Yes, good morning, Bill. Uh, many people in this country are unaware of the fact that we've got a fifth column movement in full swing in this country. And if it, we don't put a stop to it, it'll take just a few months to take this country over. Well, it wouldn't. I got into a bit of a peeing match this morning with someone on Facebook who, who, who was angry that I even engaged in it because apparently he said, well, this is not a post that you were involved in, but actually the person who posted it actually posted it as well to my Facebook page. And it was some school teacher, so already you know likely a liberal, maybe not, maybe not, but you know 95% of them are. And the school teacher said, we need to help these people because I've met some of them and, and they've had such a tough life over there, so we have to bring them all here and and aren't they wonderful? And I said, my argument in response was this. Whenever we have a mass shooting, or a shooting as we did the other day where just two people were killed, and I guess that would be mass, it's more than one, you hear the, the scream go out for gun confiscation. And the argument they make is, if we save just one life, it'll be worth it. On the other hand, if someone comes here and decides to get out a pressure cooker, throw some nails and some you know bolts into it, and they blow up a, a parade route, 100 people get killed, that's acceptable, so that we don't hurt their feelings. Oh, what's, that's right. what's, what's the and, uh, logic in that? What's the logic there? Uh, these people have no uh, no logic about what's going on. You know, every time you talk about uh, this stuff going on, gun confiscation, if you watch the market this morning, the Smith & Wesson stock has gone up uh, through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Hey, I thank you much for the call. Uh, good hearing from you. Again, the telephone number seven three six zero three hundred. 7360300 I knew a guy who used to work for Remington uh which is in the Mohawk Valley in upstate New York. I used to go up to his his camp up in the Adirondacks oh about 15 years ago or so, a uh, frequent visitor there for a while. And uh, they are trying to uh, still uh, maintain business. They've been in business since the company was founded in that particular area. But they are being pressured by the state's uh, liberal governor Andrew Cuomonist or Cuomo uh and he is trying to get rid of them because good grief they make firearms, and we can't have that. So all of the jobs and the heritage in the community, and, and the community really built around that that company, is going to be gone because he simply doesn't like them and to appease his liberal supporters so they can all feel better in the belly and, and pat themselves on the back and say, we did a good thing, didn't we? <laughs> They're going to eliminate all of the jobs involved with that plant that have been there for 150 years. You're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story. Good morning. I've been wondering, since they are insistent on bringing these illegals or legals or whatever, why, do, why don't they go into the Christian society and bring Christians instead of Muslims? I wish we could have some kind of a drive to insist that they bring the Christians. I'd like your comment on that. Thank you. And, and I have supported that in the past, and I'll just answer with this. We had a guest on last Friday morning on this subject, and he said the problem is, do we know even that they're Christians? Uh, his point was, it frightens him because, well, he's concerned. Fright might be a bad word. He's concerned because he said they can lie and say, yes, we're Christians, because we simply don't know, especially with refugees. 
Now, there are some communities that are that have been enclosed and they're living in, in, in you know, trying to hold on to these little pockets. And what's going on with these people is we know that they're being oppressed. They are clearly Christians. We might be able to bring them out. And if there's some rabble hiding among them, they'll be able to identify the rabble. But I, I just, I don't know that this country needs at this point. You know, the economy's never really gotten better since 2008. Do we need all of these people here competing for jobs? 817, you're up next. You're on the air with Bill Colley on KLIX. Good Friday morning, Bill. Thank you. The uh, whole thing is ludicrous. You know, they're all saying, well, what about these poor people? Well, what about our poor, low income class that are suffering, shooting each other, dying over a dime? So they're going to bring more people in to compete for the jobs. We're going to bring more people in that are going to end up with what we consider anchor babies. And for years and years and years, I said that's not right. And now we're finding out more and more. Let's find the verse and the, and the, the line of, of deal in the, in the 14th Amendment that says this is good, along with the intent letter of the person that wrote it. It's done. It's, it's baloney. It's something that's been done by the left just to get it done. Well, and I thank you for the call. We have to find out if we have more juice, I guess, politically than the left does. I still believe that the majority of Americans very much uh, are opposed to all of this taking place. How do we then overcome it? But it's not just the left because we have so many squishes among Republicans, some, of course, living near us. You're up next. You're on KLIX. Yeah, you know, I've got a friend that came here from the Middle East. And uh, a very conscientious, uh, hardworking fellow. Uh, but his goal is to assimilate. His goal is to be American. Okay? So when you allow a group of people not to assimilate, then you're going back to the same premise. The radical Islamists, the gays and lesbians are not satisfied with tolerance. They're not satisfied with acceptance. They want everybody to embrace their culture and their way of thinking. Yeah, true. And unless you embrace it, then they're going to try and destroy you. I thank you much for the input uh, this morning. We've got more of your telephone calls coming up in, in just a few minutes. There are people we do need. You know, they, we have certain professions we need to fill in this country. When I was a little boy, we had our primary care physician was from South Korea. And then if we had a specialist we had to go to, we used to go to a fellow who was from Brazil because living in a rural community, we just had to fill those roles and somebody had to do it. But they were good people. But we're talking, they're bringing unskilled people here by the millions, and we just don't have the jobs. More on this coming up. It's 820 and 60. Caller in the last segment mentioned a friend of his who's, who's, who's decided to emigrate here from Italy and really wants to be an American. Somebody told me once, and I, I, I didn't see any evidence to it, but I don't, I don't dispute it. I think it's probably true that during World War II, the ethnic group in this country that contributed the most percentage-wise to the war effort were people of Italian ancestry. If you're coming here from Italy or France or Germany or Poland or Spain or Ireland or Scotland, you know what? You're already westernized. And you're going to find a lot of people here from your own, your own background, whether they've been here a few generations or whether they've been here recently. There's a major difference there in how they approach the world and they see the world. Culturally, they are very much similar to what we already have and, of course, very willing to assimilate. It's 825. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. 59. Uh, going to be a warm one today. Looking for a high of 94. Also wanted to mention the fair comes up uh, Wednesday, opens up on Wednesday in Twin Falls County. And also Wednesday morning, we are going to have Dr. Jonathan Tripp from Tripp Family Medicine in studio with us. We're going to be talking about the fair with the doctor. He's going to have some things to talk about with us about, you know, just the medical issues related to it. And uh, he'll share that when he's on air with us. And so we welcome your telephone calls as well. It's a fun event. Might even be somewhat of a fun show. 
He's with us between 8.30 and 9 o'clock, and you can give us a telephone call. When was the last time you actually had a friend in the medical community that you could ask a question of? You can do it for free. And remember, life's too short not to feel good. Trip Family Medicine located on Fillmore Street, directly across from the main post office in Twin Falls. And you're up next. You're on the air on Top Story. Good morning, Dale. It's what, what really people have to realize is that Islam is in a third phase, which is called total war against the world, you know, to implement their theology, uh, religion. And uh, so they're going to use any means they can. And it's interesting that the Times News interviews people, representatives, local people that never have attended any of the meetings. They have. Haven't interviewed uh, Senator Hyder, who attended one of these meetings. Yeah, it's funny. Editorial yeah. choices that are being made certainly show the how they are trying to skew this story. Yeah, they, it's obvious. And, and so two of those people that were interviewed in the paper interview today uh, attended the Crapo meeting. And when the one lady asked how many were there because of the refugee problem, and almost everybody stood up. And I, I guess that didn't get their attention enough. But the naivety is one of the representatives is that all oh, these people are all vetted and everything, you know, it's just, you know, really great stuff. So we've never had any problems in the past, but we haven't brought in unvetted Syrian refugees where ISIS has said they're going to, they're already <laughs> bringing them in, in this, in the refugee program, they're terrorists and Christianity and Islam are not compatible, not in the least, and they're out to destroy us. What part of that don't they get? Yeah, I, I thank you much for the telephone call. Not only third phase, but third world. I think that's a good description. We have another caller, 827 on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. You're up next. Yeah, morning, Bill. What I don't understand is uh, <clears throat> if, they, if they're so unhappy with the country that you know, they, they take the opportunity to to come here, rather it's legally or illegally, then they come here and complain about our democracy or whatever systems or rules that we have in place. Why didn't they stay in the country they were in and and band together and make those, you know, stand up? It's because they have we have free speech in this country and they don't have it in there or wherever they're coming from. And I'm talking all legals or illegals. And uh, Band together in your own country. Look at Mexico. It's a mess. Well, why don't what, you guys all, if you're so unhappy well, here, why don't you get together and go make that a great place? Here, here's a question that doesn't get asked very often. Uh, Saudi Arabia is a wealthy country. Kuwait is a wealthy country. Gutter is a wealthy country. Um, all right, well, uh, I guess he, he got his point across and didn't need anything more. But these are all, some of these countries in that part of the world, have, they're sitting atop you know, mounds and mounds of oil wealth they've built up over the last several uh, several decades. Why aren't they doing anything? How come Turkey isn't taking these people? And it's not necessarily a third world country. It's got some, you know, pretty decent economy, fairly stable. Uh, why aren't they taking them in? Now, I see the problem is Sunni doesn't get along with Shia. Well, all right, but you still have countries over there that can they can divvy people up and they can do this. Why is it always expected that Western Europe and the United States, Canada, and Australia have to pick up all of the slack? You're up next. You're on the air with Bill Colley. Good morning, Bill. Hey, I, I, I tag you in a lot of my Facebook posts because I know there's a lot of people out here that tune in every morning just to see how wrong you're going to be about a subject. Uh-huh. So, so the, the, the tag that I put you in that they got you into conversation with, actually it's my cousin's son, um, the, the thing is, is that stuff is not being reported on MSNBC, on CBS, on NBC, on ABC News, things like that are not being reported. Obviously, it's not being reported by the Times News locally. They want to make sure everything is sunshine and rainbows for everybody with this refugee program. And I really think that uh, the people in this valley need to have an honest, informed opinion on this. And that means having both sides of the thing. There is a dark side to the refugee program that they're not willing to admit to. Right, because it, it would it'd run against their liberal uh, creed, uh, and, and they can't do that, obviously. Absolutely, and I appreciate you for you know for you, for bringing it up this morning because that it's just you know when something like this happens, there's the, the deal that happened in uh, Paris where the the Muslims beat up the uh, the uh, teenage girl because she was wearing a bikini. Well, yeah, I gotta let you run on that note, but you're right. I mean, we're dealing with people who cannot assimilate and will not.
8.30. Bill Colley with you. The EPA got a smackdown. Details on the way. You did hear me mention we're expecting a high today of 94. Now, the weather is going to be, if, if well, the forecast this far in advance sometimes is tough to tell, but it looks like Wednesday, the opening day of the fair in uh, in uh, in Filer, 77 will be the, the high for the day, which means you won't be roasting while you're walking around. In fact, it looks like there's a nice stretch of just partly sunny days with temperatures in the, uh, the, the mid to upper 70s at least through the first several days of the fair. But today, 94, and likely warm again tomorrow, and that means if you're sitting in your home and that heat is beating through those windows from the sunshine, you can reduce that by up to 72% with window tint, which is why we've been telling you to call Tint Lady of Idaho. In fact, you can you can give them a call and get a free estimate. They'll come out and do it. And they can do your home, your office, your automobile. And you realize this. I mentioned this the other day. I pulled into Smith's to run in the other day just to pick up a couple of small things, and I forgot to open the sunroof. I came back out, opened the door, and holy smoke, I couldn't believe in about 10 minutes just how quickly that oven had heated up inside. Well, window tints will help cut that down. And, of course, if you're doing this in your home or business, that means when those AC units are running, you can save on your electric bills. You can call and schedule an appointment, the telephone number 736-8469, or go to the website, TintLadyIdaho.com. Locally owned and operated, over 20 years of experience. 1887 Highland Avenue East in Twin Falls. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Close Sunday, but they will meet with you on Saturday by appointment. Uh, so just wanted to share all of that. And remember, don't squint. Get tint. A judge in North Dakota has made a decision that is going to make many people, especially, I guess, in the agriculture industry here, very, very happy. But even a lot of private property owners. The EPA decided, well, again, Organizations like the EPA, your your members of the House and Senate have decided to wash their hands of doing some of the legislating that they are they are charged to do constitutionally. So they have set up enabling legislation and they give organizations such as the EPA, the FDA, the USDA, they give them the ability to make laws, they call them regulations, but what's the difference? Laws on their own without any consent from the governed. So the EPA came along and issued new guidelines, which would have allowed them, as I understand it, to come on your property at any time to inspect puddles, ponds, streams. Uh, it just it is absolutely with their definition of what a body of water was. Uh, I was talking to someone a couple of weeks ago who's in the beef cattle business and said to me, "This is an effort simply to wipe out agriculture in Idaho." Now I know a lot of you people when you hear agenda 21 you think that we're you know we're out there you know wearing our tin foil hats and worried about black helicopters and the like there is such a thing in fact the UN has actually changed the name now to uh, agenda 2030 or I think it's called 2030 agenda uh, they're, they're moving it up from just agenda 21 meaning the 21st century to 2030 trying to get all of this done and implemented they don't want you living in various places where there's not much water in a natural state They'd like to have everybody in cinder block high rises living along a couple of coasts, and then you can take the train, the choo choo to work, or ride your bicycle. You won't need roads, you won't need automobiles, and good gosh, we'll save the planet. So the EPA comes along and says, This is the rule. You can't argue with it because we can make our own laws, and you have no say in it. Well, several states, I think it was 19 of them, it was 16 or 19, I remember reading about this a few weeks ago, filed suit, including Idaho, and they said, we don't want to deal with this. From John Siciliano writing at the Washington Examiner, court blocks EPA water rule. A federal court blocked an Environmental Protection Agency rule on Thursday that would give the federal government jurisdiction over ditches, tributaries, and other waterways normally under the control of states. Just the other day I was out for a drive. I uh, took a long drive, uh, just decided to go out in the country and tour around for a little while, do a little sightseeing with my four-wheel drive, you know, burning up all of that, uh, that precious fossil fuel. I just thought you liberals would like to know that. And I was out there bahaing around in my four-wheel drive, and I just couldn't, uh, couldn't fathom the number of, of what we've got, the canals that have been built here. The, the, the ditch, well, they're canals, really, in the size. Uh, the ditches, though, that people have built to try and irrigate the land so that we can live here. And you know what? They did a dang good job. It really shows you human ingenuity. But the EPA wanted to come along and say, aha, we're going to be taking over all of the uh, governance of this. And you know what? Then they can shut it off whenever they feel like it. I mean, that gives them the ability to do that. They can come up and say, well, you know, we, we did a little testing and we found 
Uh, 38 participles of, uh, you know, they'll come up with some ridiculous thing and give you a bunch of numbers and tell you, uh, you know, uh, there was this bacteria in there and there was this in there and there was some algae and it's breeding mosquitoes, so you you can't use it this year. Yeah, but what about my ranch? Well, you shouldn't be living out here anyway. It's bad for the environment. Uh, we have a beautiful cinder block high rise uh, built on a model, by the way, that we found in the old Soviet archives. And we're going to move you there, and then you can stand in line and wait for three hours to buy toilet paper made of burlap, just like our Soviet heroes did. This is what we're dealing with. So the judge has stepped in. We don't know if this is over with yet. The EPA may go back and try to find a judge in a higher court. And uh, the judge could read. It depends on who the judge is. And if they're appointed by, of course, a Clinton or an Obama, you may know what the result will be. But so far, it looks as if this thing is on hold. And that could be what saves a good part of the, the Northwest in this country. We've got more coming up. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. President the other day said that he thinks in a few years we can get 30% of our electrical needs from the giant pinwheels. Yeah, now he has admitted to smoking dope, hasn't he? You can see what it did to him. 20 minutes from 9 o'clock. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News 1310.com. 61. Donald Trump is back in the news. Got to share some stories about him in just a few minutes.